Well, hello, creatives, community, and kind folks. Welcome to RPG with DBJ. I am your host, DBJ, and of course, all of you co-hosts out there in the larger tabletop role-playing community, welcome to the channel. Now, today is Wednesday, which means it's World Building Wednesday, and our theme that we were taking throughout this entire week is about uh, gender and gender roles and and gender fluidity and that kind of thing, and using that as our uh, basis for creative fuel. Now, on World Building Wednesday, we do have we do have kind of a rule, and our rule is that while it is very easy, especially within the tabletop role playing community, to uh, disassemble, to dissuade people from things, uh, lots of lots of uh, comments like, for example, uh, something is impossible to happen or something wouldn't happen logically. And we're going to, we completely get rid of that. What we want to do is we want to take our theme uh, this week being gender. We've used all kinds of themes from uh, Medusa's to snowstorms and whatnot. Maybe one day we might use like broccoli or tube socks or whatever, but we're going to use our theme and we're going to build a world around it. We're going to, we're going to start our, we're to start our equation from the end result. This is an end result where um, large sections of our world have been uh, changed and shifted and manipulated by uh, various uh, gender roles and divisions in society. And then we're going to build our world backwards from there. So today, what we're going to do is I, I don't believe that Instead of trying to build a world from scratch, uh, much like, say, building a world where dragons have dominated the society or something of that nature, instead, what I think is, <laughs> um, instead, what I think we can do is find different sections of a of a world and try to flip it on its head a little bit. Um, change different things like societal roles, like maybe divisions of labor, uh, politically, uh, since we since we tend to primarily talk fantasy, uh, there may also be uh, restrictions or uh, societal norms based on gender when it comes to uh, participants in like arcane arts or uh, religion and that that kind of thing. So I thought we would start from there. Debbie is like broccoli was done in first edition. <laughs> uh, are we talking the? Oh, I know mushrooms were, and I know the veggie pygmies. I suppose veggie pygmies would would taste uh, would, would taste very veggie like. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. <laughs> so, hey, hey, hey. Fought bacon, eggs, and toast once. <laughs> uh, I, I hope in game, because <laughs> if it was made terribly, I hope you won that <laughs> won that fight. Hey, Rickard, hey, what's up, man? It's been a little while. Yeah, Mykonoids, yep. <laughs> Good old mushroom people. Although, would that be cannibalism if you ate the veggie pygmies and the Mykonoids? Maybe with a little olive oil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the monster menu, the monster manual. Yeah, like like the monster manual. Yeah, <laughs> shows you uh, what is it? It's a whole list of what those uh, monsters would taste like and the best way to prepare them. Yeah, oh, uh, you're all right. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, let's begin with this world building. In this world building, I feel might be a, a, a lot more scatterbrained from us, but it's all right. So, uh, of course, this this week we're we're absolutely talking about uh, var variating gender roles and things of that nature. And I think, mm, <laughs> okay, no problem, Rickard. There's um, I I think one of the main ones in say fantasy and whatnot. Uh, we can start with very generalized divisions of labor and why they would be shifted around. And I think even in a world where, you know, the, 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 the women do the childbearing and they stay home, the men go out to hunt and or do battle. I think there's some really uh, strong external reasons why that would have been shifted around. And we might even draw some ties with that 
in terms of um, in terms of the the fantasy versions or fantasy elements that happen in games. For example, um, mage, maybe a society's had so many battles that the 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 those dudes that are expendable. You know, once the population starts to die down and back at a time when it was necessary for people to have lots of children because they needed all that labor, maybe in uh, magic allows us to de- to divide up that labor where you it's that's not needed much anymore. So that's also a possibility as well. Uh, Tesla says in Bayonetta, only women can. What's the game? Yeah, only women can become Umbra witches, and only men can become Lumen sages. I didn't know that. Uh, witches' power comes from making packs with demons that are enhanced by the light of the moon, while the sages commit to serve Laguna and are enhanced by the sun. The forbidden union of an Umbra witch, uh, Umbra meaning like dark or or moon or whatever, and a uh, Lumen sage is what kicks off the events of the game. Um, I also hope they explain the the uh, gunfire shoes and the uh, lots of latex. I hope they explain that part of it. No, but but, it, but in all seriousness, because yeah, if you see somebody um, cosplaying Bayonetta, it's like um, yeah, <laughs> wings, yeah. <laughs> But does way does it say like ooh the women get power from from evil troop, yeah there's well we've we've seen plenty of of things where like women are uh, men the power is only reserved for a specific gender now like for example in Dune with the the Benny Gesserit they literally went out of their way to ensure that on, that people only thought that way because. You know, they killed the guys. You, you weren't allowed to have uh, male babies. And so there might be something in a society where, for example, there could be a, a knight's order, like like the the opening of uh, the movie 300, where you have these great warriors and there's. Uh, um, oh, we should, no latex. That's her hair. That makes it worse. That doesn't make it better. <laughs> But there's um there may be a, a cabal of individuals that are specifically um uh, specifically making sure that people think that a thing is true when it's not like a like a warrior class and they toss out the 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 lady so that the men could be part of the warrior class or um there are there uh there are oracles and they only pick oracles due to the women are only engaged in or in becoming an oracle because any guy that shows those attributes uh, might be you know uh, exiled or killed or someone is like no that that doesn't exist or maybe their power is they're given a potion and that power is is subsided inside of them years later or something of that nature so that's also a possibility as well i mean many people uh, <laughs> yeah, I wish, or no, no, maybe I don't wish that. <laughs> Let's just say that I, I, I won't be wearing Bayonetta's outfit <laughs> anytime soon. <laughs> Growing my hair around my body, I'm always dressed. <laughs> now, uh, something else uh, is possible, like the the classic Amazon, you know, Amazonian women, you know, defending a particular land, and. Uh, again, it might be maybe there's been so much war or a disease has been has wiped out the, the population or something of that nature. And then the women had to step up and then and, and then finally they, you know, a bunch of dudes get there and they're just like, what the hell's going on here? And it's like, well, all the guys died. There was a Netflix show, Western show called. Oh, Oh wow! It was a uh, one season. It wasn't really that good. It had a great premise though, where all the guys worked at a mi- in a mine, and uh, poison gas got out of the mine. And it's pretty pretty nasty uh, imagery though. But when the elevator came back up after the the mine collapse and the poison gas and such came out, um, the, the elevator was packed with all the dudes. It was like 80, 90 something guys that all died, and so. 
um, what was left in this small town, this small mining town, after, of course, the mine was uh, empty, were all these women that lived there. And they were like, well, we're all gotta, we all have to kind of stick together. And then you saw how the, the political machinations of what was going on, where some women were like, you know, we need a bunch of dudes to come in here and uh, repopulate our small town, while others were like, F that, you know? Uh, Mike says, well, if one makes plate armor look like it should and avoid the, the boob plate trope, yeah, we don't need to go back to that. Uh, the actual sex of a warrior may remain unknown until the helmet uh, comes off, which which goes in line with the quote from her Lord of the Rings, I am no man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, there may be the idea, uh, yesterday we were talking about the the legal system in terms of the the classic of the wearing of the the black robes and the white wig and whatnot and how it was it was designed to make uh, practitioners of law seem um, divorced from societal norms and the same may go for uh, various roles in a particular society where it's not expected for you to to be no one cares if you're male or female. So the way people dress and act and some of the things it might much of like the classic, I know the executioners usually have like the big arms and a, and a black mask on and a big ax, but the executioner always wore a mask. So you didn't know who that person was. I'm sure people knew who they were, but, but the idea was that you didn't know what they were. So yeah, wearing, wearing certain types of armor or clothing, you may not know who, who and what they are. Now, of course we do understand that, for very logical reasons in uh, moving on from hunting and gathering and tribal all the way up into a more me medieval periods of time that we, A, a we need a, a larger population. You needed people. You needed to have lots of kids because because that was labor. That's where a lot of your labor came from. But I wonder if magic, if, if magic becomes prevalent, if magic becomes the new technologies, how quickly would that shift and change right like if you we, we have player character options where you, you know you've got barbarians and rangers and magical abilities to deflect attacks and things like that <laughs> um, um purify food and water and good berry and create food and water and you know it's like you know a, a lot of ladies are like you don't need me sticking at home you've got magic to do all that kind of stuff Dead man says, or you can reverse the boot plate trope and have a man wearing boot plate. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Or or classically, you could even have classically male formed armor that's just passed down from generation to generation, no matter the no matter the the gender itself. Or like uh I mentioned before, a like a, a warlocks or clerics or something of that nature. They can take on the avatar bodily form of the people they are in league with, no matter what their gender is. So, like a young lady, a young lady that is in league with, uh, like the proverbial god of war, that's this massive dude. She might be character-wise, might be a barbarian that turns into this big dude, goes slashing everything, and then turns back into a young lady at the at the when not raging or something like that and vice versa too right uh, um, a guy who's a cleric might be uh might be a, a cleric that's a worshiper of a i don't know like the twins it might be a male female twin or it might be a a pantheon or something and and so they whenever they use their powers whenever they exalt their 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 special abilities or something they take on the the gender of the religion of the the god that they are using their powers from, which would be kind of cool as well. Godless, thank you. Shit, there you go. It's it's the the show was called Godless. Uh, Michael says, "Wait, that mining town is that the is that the Western Godless?" Yes, it is. I I I wished it hit on a, a number of things that I think were really cool in in Godless that that I think is where a lot of drama could come from. And um, and whatnot. Uh, Rickard says, uh, says, isn't the male boot plate just a loincloth? Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I suppose. I mean, if you really, really want to get down to it, I suppose the, the soldiers in 300, they had their little leather Speedos and whatnot. Um, we don't wash our Speedos. <sighs> Mike says, furthermore, in Battletech, the sex of the elemental genetically enhanced warrior inside the battle armor is unknown. There are some fantastic female elementals out there and you wouldn't know it until it's too late. I don't know much about the, about battle tech, the, especially the non, the non mecha versions of uh history of the battle tech, but that's awesome. And, and it would make a lot of sense too. Rickard says, or technically, I guess it would be two cross straps over the torso. So the loincloth thing seems semi-universal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like He-Man's breastplate. <laughs> My pecs are showing. And, uh, she is like, I'm not wearing that, He-Man. I am not wearing that at all. <laughs> um, so um, an- another aspect of the, the doing the world building with the gender thing is that, of course, we're not limiting the player characters to any of these kind of things. But a lot of times when the players go from, they always have to travel and they go from place to place and, and they have to uh, ingratiate themselves with the new culture, having sp- specific genders being part of the, of the new norm, wherever they visit might be pretty interesting. Like for example, uh, a, a guy's playing a wizard and arrives in a place where, or, Players are playing a specific gender when they arrive at a wizard's temple. And we, we've, of course, we talked about this before, where maybe there's a, a, a wizard's cabal that feels that you cannot elevate yourself until you've gotten rid of your own gender. Like maybe they are asexual or they, they are the truest sense of gender fluid. Um, heck, they could even have a, the, uh, someone, um, uh, PM'd me talking about playing characters that are racially fluid. And I think it's possible, like, of course, we already know about Corlan Letharian and, and elves being able to, to shift their, their genders. And so maybe there's like a wizard's cabal that's like, you know what? I don't think you're that good at being a wizard, you know, not caring about character levels, right? They're like, I'm fourth level. I can't wait to get my fireball spell. And the wizards are like, I don't think you deserve to have a fireball spell. Look at you. You've got, I don't know, distinctness within your genitalia area, right? <laughs> like pick one <laughs> or don't pick one at all. It should be gone. Or, or you should be able to at the, at a, <laughs> you, you know, with a little short rest, you should be able to snap your fingers and change it. And the PC is like, what the hell's going on here? I just wanted to learn a spell. Right. And so, um, yeah. It, and, there's, I think the idea of like conf- not confronting it, but like going like, oh, I didn't think about that. That might be kind of cool. Mike says there's a gender trope in fantasy where women are only archers, which doesn't account for the fact that archers are some of the physically strongest warriors. It's not like compound bows are are, uh, are circa 1066. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Could absolutely have. Uh, could could fantasy have strong female archers? Absolutely. Um, looks at yeah, why are women archers? I don't know. I think it's because I think it's because the it is we are sometimes we overlay our own modern context on a thing, much like it, it's the idea of of people who think that women weren't warriors at a time when there were lots of them because you know when when the guys are out to play and the women have to stay they got to defend themselves and we already have examples of of uh in, in, in viking culture how powerfully um, adept at being warriors they were as well as uh, uh japanese culture and and the use of of various martial skills and whatnot and so it's not that they're it, it's kind of weird how we we um we use pattern recognition sometimes too much and and go like well if if women were were supposed to be the child bearers none of them could be warriors that's far from far from the truth it's just that in general it happened more often than than not the same the same thing goes for 
goes for men that were only hunters and gatherers, right? Like, well, or only hunters and the women were gatherers. It's like, no, guys had to weave and cook and uh, all that kind of stuff back at home, right? They weren't allowed to sit around too much. They may not have wanted to, but the ladies are like, look, if you ain't going out hunting, you go, your ass is going to do some work around here. And of course, the, the, ne- the necessity of survival meant that, you know, men, men were farmers and all that kind of business, not as if they're only hunters and they're only warriors, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vampinoid, seriously. <laughs> Gives a new meaning to dropping fire balls when you reach fifth level. But boom boom. <laughs> I love it. Could you imagine oh this it's pretty terrible, but could you imagine like the wizard PC is like, okay, I've passed all of your tests. Now do I get the fireball spell? And they're like, one more thing. And then they start put they start putting like latex gloves on, like <laughs> All right, turn turn to the left and cough. Rub, rub, rub the PC <laughs> down there. Like what? Huh? Yeah, Wayne's like try try drawing a bow with a hundred and thirty pound pull. Oh, oh my god! I, I I love archery. I haven't been able to do it in, in such a long time. But at, as a kid, man, going to camp and doing archery, and some of those bows are you know the little kids' bows are nothing, but some of those s- super strong bows are are hugely tough. Like you have to grow up. There, there is a fallacy that women couldn't compete at the same level as men in the warrior cultures because, and that fallacy is because if you if you grew up with a sword in your hand, man, your your hand grip and your forearms, my my God, yeah, you're powerful as shit. <laughs> Michael says, it sounds like most fantasy authors aren't raised by single moms. Oh, ooh, ooh, there's a hot take, yeah. Yeah, you you, you haven't seen anything to use till a single mom has to defend their kid and turn into a beast. And, I mean, even what's what's the classic story of Lone Wolf and Cub that's been done many times where the guy's basically carrying... Uh, carrying the child uh, uh, on his back while he's doing battle. I'm sure that's happened plenty of times where where um, w- women have had to do that more often than a little bit. And, of course, to get their families from one place to another, um, guys are going to have to step up and do that. Deadman says the elementals in battle tech usually wore nothing under their armor, as was explained in book three of the Clan Jade Falcon novel. Ooh. Hmm. Um, I think something else that might be uh, where we can play with world building in terms of gender, we could do this even subtly. Like, uh, for example, I remember um, my wife was a bit offended by uh, someone where, okay, so you get a group of people and they introduce themselves to someone. And the person that they introduce themselves to acts and reacts in different ways or maybe has no reaction at all based on the perceived gender of the people they're interacting with. Uh, A perfect example would be a guy who only introduces himself to another male but does not acknowledge the females in the group. Or um, the, the, it's the primary class, secondary classism of, like um, men get to sit here, the women go over to this other section. Or the idea that um, a, a person who has a, a specific information and the PCs need to get information from someone that the young lady it will never talk to the guys, but another young lady, sure, we'll, we'll, we'll get the information from them as well. And sure, you, could this be reflected mechanically? Um, you could do it mechanically. Dungeon 5th edition has advantage, disadvantage. Maybe there are um, there there are young ladies that do a lot of the the weaving in the in there's a bunch of guilds and there's a mercantile section of the city where they process goods that are brought into the city. And you know, unfortunately, they won't talk to the guys because as the PCs may find out that there might be some pretty violent men walking around and, and uh, taking advantage of it. So maybe, you know, 
the big burly guy. You'll never get any information out of the ladies, no matter what your charisma level is. They just know that you're going to, they know that you're going to turn on them at some point, but maybe the low charisma young lady in the group might, you know, be able to get some particular information out of them. And then of course you can start to mix and match and play with that, especially if we, we go more fantastical. <laughs> I love the idea of the going on an adventure to get the girdle of, of femininity and masculinity and to go after the MacGuffin that is able to uh, shift and change or uh, flex someone's physical gender type might be pretty interesting, you know, um, as well as something like, for example, um, moving into more of a, I, I, I don't know how embraced this would be um, because I can't speak on the, the, the uh, real world version of this, but someone, maybe if someone astral projects, they like a male physical person, my astral project imagining themselves as a female in a male's body. So when they astral project or they, they somehow uh, use their arcane powers or something, they, you see the feminine side of them, which might allow them to communicate with individuals that they, that other people are like, Oh, I didn't know that that was, that's you inside. Oh, I didn't know that. Like, no, I'm the same person. I just was just born in a different body. And they go, Oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't know that, you know? Um, that might be an interesting role-playing opportunity for players and maybe even classes of people within a city. Mike Gould says, there's a new German film coming to Netflix about a single mom trapped on a plane with terrorists, but she's a Nosferatu and no one knows it. Blood Red Sky. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> yeah. Blood Red Sky. Of course, of course, the, the single mom, they're all, you know, a bunch of people on a plane, they're like, they won't expect her. And she's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to kill some people. Oh, I'm going to kill them good. Dante says, it's a trope in a lot of anime that only women can do a thing. And then the story is a, then the story is a guy can suddenly do it too, mostly to set up a, a harem setting, but it still raises weird bits in the world building. Uh, uh, Dune is, is, again, Dune goes back to that. All the Benny Gesserit are the, are the, oracles witches the psychics in the in the sci-fi world and here's this there's a uh, this dude comes about and of course in on the planet dune they have this um, prophecy that a male benny gesserit would arise even though they created the whole prophecy in the first place and then the, the actual thing happens and then palm um atreides is this like I'm not that person, but we're I, in order for us to live, we're going to have to pretend like I am that person and and whatnot. And then it comes out to be that he really is that person and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm -mm. And yeah, that is a very much a trope where, uh, well, it, I, I think that trope's been flipped around quite a bit. What's the classic story? Oh, it um, it's a Shakespearean story, but it's been done, I believe, plenty of times before Shakespeare and afterwards of the of uh, um, um, it's the all boys club girl dresses up as guy joins in like the Mulan story or the opposite guy can't get into the the uh, the girls club dresses up as a girl slips in and then of course you know hilarity ensues uh, lessons are learned and that kind of thing but i suppose in a fantasy setting you it might need to be done magically hey play all the players need to go to the hag to drink a potion so that they all so all the members that aren't of a particular gender become that other gender to slip in and stay that way. Maybe there's a time limit or <laughs> the, the potion becomes permanent if they're not able to get another um, another potion to reverse it. Or maybe it's a trick or maybe they realize that the, the enemy isn't the enemy they thought they were or something like that. Dead Man says, see the movie The Great Wall had the women archer tropes writ large. Oh, <laughs> hey, Rickard, have a great one. Mm -mm -mm. See, Mike says, not sure if it's still current, but Shadowrun used to do that sort of imagery when when astral projecting. Yeah, the idea that your, your inner self, your astral projected self isn't exactly the same as your material self. 
yeah, the planet from Dune was Arrakis. And was wasn't it the Harkonnen or the Harkonnen versus the or one of the noble families? Uh, of course, the bad guys. I will kill you. I will kill him. I will kill him. Um, and the the Atreides, something like that. They came from a aquatic world. Dante says the, I think the women archer trope may have something to do with the aesthetic of the female form in the bow. Curves match, match curves and recurves. Matching your line type is a art foundational rule. That is actually very true. Um, where guys are tend to be triangular shaped, broad chest, angular body, and, and then the lower body is also uh, upside down triangle, so hips narrow down, shoulders narrow down, like basically two upside down triangles on top of each other, whereas the female form is normally hourglass, so it's like pointed down triangle, bottom triangle down kind of thing, and a bow kind of matches and, and just turns that, you know, because a bow is curved outwards, held upwards, so it kind of curves outwards with the body. Um, I, I could see that. I could see that being a uh, a foundational thing from art and, and an unconscious aesthetic to that as well. I see that being, yeah, yeah, guys being more square and uh, broad topped body, so you'll see a lot of shields, breastplates, uh, that kind of thing. Mike says, thinking back, Planet of the Apes did this in a hidden way. Hmm. All gorillas were male. If you wanted to give a female a voice, she had to be a chimpanzee. Ooh. That that does happen a lot too, as well. Where the the bigger the, the if they are not human, the bigger one is the male, the smaller one female. So you would get like elephants, rhinoceroses, gorillas, uh, T Rex, dinosaurs. If you give them a voice, they're male, and if they're female, they are parakeets, and maybe maybe even a pterodactyl or a uh, what's, what's something else like a, a spider or um, more of the like birds or small insects or like you said um, bonobos Cherok uh, Cherokees that's not what I meant chimpanzees that kind of thing maybe, maybe even like rabbits uh, or, or whatnot yeah guys usually predators ladies usually prey that that, that can happen quite a bit. Uh, and then, and then, of course, the flipping of the role would be giving a female voice to the predator, which try, which kind of it, it subverts the expectation, um, unless there is a someone sedu a du seductress or conniving, which case like snakes kind of fit into that, or chameleons fit into that one as well. Um, uh, harpies, harpy sirens, uh, dryads. Uh, kind of fit into that as well. Fake creatures, a lot of females. Vampinoise is a character who's the offspring of a changeling and um, a ladrin to have the have the most fluid character identity, calling them Hot Girl Summer. <laughs> Ooh, I, uh, changeling and a, a ladrin. Well, that would be kind of cool. You could do something. You could do something seasonal as well as as. Uh, duplicating other people that that's actually a really good idea that's actually a really good idea uh, to be honest with you like dead man says female spiders were uh we uh were usually larger than the males and in in nature oftentimes the uh, we we see a lot of the male versions in nature having to uh display themselves for the females, which in in retrospect you'll see, you'll see, we often see it the opposite way, where we expect the the women to uh, dress up or identify themselves with like colors and flamboyancy, and the men sit back and kind of pick and choose. But that might be that might be population related. So, I suppose if there's in a humanoid society, if there's less females and more men, um, and you didn't want to do the men throwing the woman over his shoulder and stealing them away, there could be a lot of gentleman caller kind of things going on in a more uh, civilized society. Hmm. So the men have to dress up a lot more. The women don't have to because they get a lot to choose from. No. 
Oh, Mike says, I have to say, in the original Wonder Woman movie, when she entered into no man's land, I'm so glad she did not say, I am no man. Yeah. <laughs> yes. She just entered dangerous territory and kicked ass. M- much better scene. That, that movie... 75% of that movie was good. The, that ending part was, was trash. But come on, we all know that. But yeah, that, that scene where she goes into no man's land and blocks the 50 cal, yeah, pretty sweet. Mm-mm-mm. Tessa Sl- says, amongst among the um, Fistani of, Raven, of the Ravenloft game setting, only women can be spiritual or mystical leaders of a tribe as males with the sight are killed at birth to av- avert their... Let's continue to comment. They're becoming culture's version of the Antichrist. Men do do, do direct the mundane uh, day-to-day activities of a caravan, but only with the female uh, Ronnie's approval. And that might be a way to, I, I, I'll say, flip the script a little bit. Like, sure, there might be, you, you know, the men are soldiers, the women are at home, but maybe the women are in charge of how that's, how the labor is divided in the first place, for example, or maybe the, the, the women are far more in, in charge of, of the goings on inside of a city and the PCs assume one thing and th- that could offend the people who are maybe inside of a small town or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Michael's is female spiders. A lot of insects too. Like female, female spiders are always larger. <laughs> yeah. A lot of that happens with a lot of insects, right? Where the female, the females are usually larger than the man. Cause they can like, basically like <laughs> take them out. Uh, I, I know I'm getting a little bit behind here with you, you guys, but Pelora says, yeah, I, I was just thinking of Shalob though. You also have angler fish. The ones you think, think of are all female. And, um, I forget what alien race there was where the male and the female in the alien race didn't look anything like one another. I think the male was humanoid and the female was like a a Cthulhu type of thing. I can't remember. Mm-mm-mm. Uh, Pelora says, I think when you lay eggs, it's better to be bigger as female. Lizard folk Males should be smaller, I think. And also, we we could actually, I mean, we can rationalize this absolutely making sense in, in a larger scope of things, whether it be, there was a period of time where the female form was assumed to have uh, much more mass, you know, more rotund, thicker, basically. And the idea was that the maybe it was subconscious, or it could have been just a conscious choice that if you had more body fat, that meant you were eating well well, and genetically that might actually work for childbirth because you have more resources inside of your body to feed the child in the first place. Or after they're born, of course, when it comes to like breastfeeding and things like that, and it was a sign of wealth. So uh, females being bigger. And then of course, if, if women are supposed to stay sedentary at home, essentially, and the men go out, it might make, a, like, for let's talk about the lizard folk, it might make a lot more sense for the the lizard folk in, like, a swamp or something, the men to be, or the male version of them, or maybe they might shift, if, if they are non, what would we call it, um, there isn't a genetic, there's no gender division, it's that if you are a smaller lizard folk, you take on the male role, if you're a larger lizard folk, you take on the female, or they might even go through changes but anyway maybe being smaller you're small fast you use less resources when you're on the move uh you're easier easier to hide and camouflage so they take on the male role so they're warriors and they go out and then the bigger ones are are maybe they are they're they're going through that seasonal change where they get bigger so they can lay eggs they their, their body is able to adjust to temperature changes and they can curl around the eggs or something like that so yeah that that might be a that might be a real thing as well where uh, it, dragonborn don't have genders they they flow into what we would consider a gender role based on their um what cycle they're in or something like that uh, he's like, I'm super late. <laughs> uh, Z says, as in, as in with my kobolds and dragons, 
the one has to wonder about how things lock in. Cor- oh, 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 sorry, sorry. I, was, I, I, I didn't go to for primary comment. Since you're super late, you already know a lot about my setting when it comes to gender roles, though. Um, and then it continues with, um, as in with my kobolds and dragons. Yep, yep. <laughs> the one has to wonder about how things lock in correctly. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, who, how does one fit where? Yeah, mm-mm-mm. Knowles don't wear boo plate. <laughs> All right, so um, I, I think. Oh, sorry, Mike does have a comment, and then we'll go into something else that just popped into my head. Mike says I hadn't thought of this before, but I may, I may address gender roles in giant society in Thol. I'm thinking that fire giants will not care so long as the giant in question succeeds in battle, and that may be a thing as well. Like for example, for example, instead of men warriors women caretakers it might be seen as a form of of honor for like a, a woman that can fight in traditional in a traditional role may be seen as like a, a great catch because they're like listen if i'm leaving home and i i want my family to to live i need somebody who can kick some ass and if she can if she's there and she can train some of some of the underlings to help protect the family, hell's yes, you know. Um, also, it may be that uh, what's uh, marriage has been commonly known where you have like dowries and uh, marriages were very political to unite families. Even even today in our modern context, uh, marrying up, you you know, a guy marrying into a, a rich uh, young lady's family or vice versa, a very rich guy, you know, um, being betrothed to maybe a lower class family, wants their daughter to ma- to marry, to, to move up. And uh, th- we could very much play with that idea, right? Because what was mentioned yesterday, it wasn't, gender didn't matter with marriage. The important part was to to breed, to have children, because that would pass on the legacy. And that's how, uh, no, I don't want to call it finances. That's how resources, res- resource management was divvied up and passed on from by legacy, right? So, and we did that through children. So y- your firstborn would take on your empire or your land or your money or your cattle and whatnot and dowries. Maybe we can play with that a little bit. Could you imagine Imagine, I, I know this sounds a little bit rapey, but a warrior guy or someone who's like learned learned some skills, but they don't have any, uh, or, or they have, there's no females in the group. So the guy knows that in order to get peace, they have to arrange a marriage with the leadership of another place. Maybe they go through a quest or they find a hag or something. They're like, I'll, I'll drink a potion and become female in order to unite our tribes together. And they're like, are you sure you'll do that? You're like, yeah, I don't mind. I like this guy. And it's not a big deal because our culture, we don't even look at things like that, right? We take on the role that's necessary for what we need to do. And maybe there's like a magical way for a guy to become female to, uh, to join in a marriage or something. I once, I even considered, and, and why I say that sounds rapey is because if you have a culture that demands people physically change their gender to um, enact in, uh, in in a physical reproduction, that might seem a little bit like, uh, what if the person doesn't want to do it, but they do it anyway? That It's kind of forced, but yeah. But I mean, something like that could, could be a possibility. Um, especially if it's like, Two, two two communities are like, oh, I know, I got a great idea, and they're like, hey, we're really cool together. Why not? You know, um, <laughs> Mike's like <laughs> thought about his favorite with the giants and stuff. I don't do too. I haven't used giants very much in games over like forty years. I haven't used giants very much. I, maybe I should do that. Uh, Wayne mentions cool to consider for fun. If real. If in real life, if the females go to war and die, the tribe suffers for years, may even expire with too few females left. The other way around the tribe, the other way around the tribe can repopulate easier. And I think, see, this is where I think magic 
in Dungeons and Dragons and breaking the expectation. And um, where I say sometimes in the role playing community, we're too brilliant for our own selves because we're pa- we as humans are are pattern recognition machines. If you have magic, you're no longer limited by that. So a bunch of guys go off to war, population dies out. Well, there's a lot of females. We can repopulate with few guys, a lot of women. But flipping that over, a lot of women die. You have nothing but males left. If you've got magic, who's to say that you can't? The guys are like, listen, we need to repopulate. Like, I'm a knight is like, yeah, I'm dedicated, or a herald, or a cavalier, or something like that. They're like, yeah, I'm dedicated to my popula- to the population. I'll do what it takes. If that means murdering my enemies, sure. If it means taking on the childbearing role to do a thing, and we don't necessarily need to... How do I say this? You, you, you don't... Internal and external genitalia and body function, we could mix and match those things, if that makes sense, right? Like, you don't need to have a feminine, you may, a guy may not need to have an exterior feminine look, they might just need to have the feminine genitalia to reproduce, to then go to then when they're done to go back out into battle or something like that. And that could be temporary or permanent or cyclical or something of that nature as well. Ooh. Um, yeah. And my Michael brings to my point like, yeah, well, to be fair, it takes two to tango. If all the males die, there's no repopulation either. And we, we understand that if you've got one male, one male, spread C, right? <laughs> like a male can be picked up and, and <laughs> this is terrible. One male can be, can, can be squeezed, squeezed <laughs> and shoot juices everywhere. So a guy can like, it's the Rolling Stone idea. A guy can travel around and, and do a bunch of things and seed, seed and whatnot. Although a, an Amazonian culture with arcane magic might have women who are achieve a particular role in that society who temporarily become, I don't know, hentai or something like that. And, and, and they, 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 they become that role as they move from these different Amazonian societies to come back home or something, you know, heck the same could be done in like with Loth and the drow society, right? Where it's all, where it's, female led or whatnot. Uh, so, uh, okay. So uh, Zamara says, so, okay. So kobolds are generally just male dragons and dragons are all female. Frog folk are not exactly gender fluid, but they are, they are not sexual creatures when it comes to, okay, where's the next comment? Here we go. Yeah. When it, when it comes to, where's the other part? When it comes to Etten, when it comes to Etten, Hmm. They act in a matriarchal society as a one woman with hundreds of males. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Because they because they the, uh, they lay eggs and then the eggs are fertilized. But anyway, though only only the women are sentient, and then there is one human culture which has men as the fighters in wartime and guards and guards in peace times. But women are the strategists in wartime and business owners in peacetime. There are others, but I haven't written them down so they don't exist. And I, I love the idea of flipping, um, taking a whole, the whole of that comment. I love the idea of flipping the script on like, like for example, in the, the drow, the dark elves, right? The, the, the men are second class. They, yeah, they spread their seed, but that's basically all they're used for. The women are in control. So, Translating that forward, women being business owners, strategists, uh, political leaders, um, uh, when it comes to uh, um, production, like like uh, architecture and whatnot, maybe maybe women that are to quote unquote stay at home, they're the ones, and maybe maybe there's a there are they are equally capable. Like there are women warriors and male warriors. The women warriors are more homebound. The male warriors are are essentially kicked out in the wild like you 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 better go out there and travel around or something that would be a that would be a very easy 
um, way to explain why it is that uh, the the roles are shifted around, especially if the guys have to travel around a lot. They got to do all that stuff on their own. So they're going to be caretakers. Like, for example, maybe children uh, that have to be taught on the road. It's like, oh, uh, we need to send these kids off to wizard school. And the guys are like, yep, we're ready to go. We, we're the ones that take care of all the children. We do all the child rearing on the road, whereas the women are maybe um, maybe they stay in a s- specific location, you know. Mm-mm-mm. Uh Vampinoy mentions, yeah, it could be like Narat, um, Naratu, where family clans have secret techniques, so you'd have to marry to learn other clans' stuff. Ooh, yes. Um, again, if you have to join that clan to learn those secrets. You, if you stick around, they're like, look, <laughs> hey, you're going to have to wash dishes and, and all that kind of business, right? You, the, you, you're you going to have to be barefoot and, and carry children and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Um, that might be a good... I, I like the idea of that, though. Uh, Mike says, there was a the Next Generation episode where a planet was populated from only clones. They had discarded the concept of sex until clones started failing. Yeah, fail fail cloning is tight. Um, Dante says fail cloning sequences is actually another trope of sorts. Comes up in several places in media. Yep, sure does, sure does. That's that. Oftentimes, that's the prototypical like all male or all female society, and and the technique is starting to fail. So now they they need genetic material from outside. But anyway, uh, D says the the Camino aliens in Star Wars actually were experiencing that. Ooh. Ooh. Also, um, in surprisingly for a a comedic show, the Orville dealt with that quite a bit. So, as opposed to a in opposition to all female Amazonian styled society, and they need to I don't know, kidnap a man to get more genetic material in the Orville there was an all male society because of the constant wars and battles. And when they had children, they were, they did have different genders for the children, but they would science, they would use science to switch the gender of the child to male because the society has now become all male. They adapted to being all male. And during that show, they didn't have any, any easy answers when uh, Bordas and his partner uh, and, and his uh, male partner had a child who was born female, and it was seen as like you know, look down on you, like oh, we don't we don't have females in our society any longer. Like, why would you even want that? And they always sent their children for like a to like reconditioning so- school or chambers or something like that. Yeah, Wayne says uh, mentions like Stargate as guardians, same thing. Um, in terms of like uh, like like with Valkyries, I guess would fit into that category and whatnot. Um, I also I, I I think with magic and science and technology and things like that, I I feel like being able to step into um, another gender and let's 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 go even beyond. Let's talk a little. Let's get a little sexy talk, okay? Um, we know that. It would be possible, for example, that let's say there is a, and this might sound a little rapey, so please, those out there who are uh, pronies, please, and uh, um, sexually fluid, not gender fluid, but sexually fluid, uh, let me know where I'm going wrong on this. But let's say there's a warrior group, I'm going to call them the the golden lions, the golden lions are like this, this uh, really elite warrior group. I mean, they are extremely elite and you learn all the best techniques. They're combination paladins, monks, and I don't know, those uh, uh, warlords or something on there. Let's give it some character classes. Okay. And, and, um, but what people don't know is that male, female, nothing. They, they bond so tightly as a group that they are sexually fluid amongst each other. And then a PC wants to become part of the group. And it's like, 
it's almost an honor to be in this like tight knit couple dozen polyamorous styled group of people, male, female, everything in between. Um, but only amongst themselves and a PC may want to join them. Now the PC may not want to do that, but in order to learn these techniques, they're either part of it or the opposite. Hey, I'll, um, it might be very public and well known that that's what this group is like, and that even if they separate, they graduate out, or they become mercenaries, that when they come back together again, that they still have that bond, right? So, like one golden one golden war lion to another golden lion, it's like, hey, they might sit across the battlefield from each other, but they might meet clandestinely, or they maybe they might meet the day before and go, you know, we we, we might kill each other tomorrow, but today let's let's have a little. Let's let's meet up and and um, you know three of you guys and uh, you know you four ladies. Let's all get together and and uh, talk about old times and have a couple of drinks and and um, remember who was with who and reminisce. And then the next day they get in the battle, they start to murder each other or something like that. Might be a, a, a way to uh, incorporate something of that nature, as well as going back to like warlocks, druids clerics or something um how classic greek and, and roman mythology the gods come down and zeus is all horny horny and what want, want to um, boink a bunch of mortals it's possible that a player character might have a a a uh non-gender specified relationship with these otherworldly beings and creatures and whatnot. Like it might not be master and slave, like a warlock patron, like you're going to do what I tell you. And here's some power, bam, you know what I mean? Wash up afterwards, <laughs> you know, the PC's crying in the corner. It might not be that violent and, and abusive. It might be uh, um, a rather caretaker. I know, I know the, the term warlock, I think is a terrible term because maybe the Raven queen, loves their their betrothed or something or maybe there is a uh, a celestial being that um, when the the cleric meditates to gain their power they they are lifted up into this other world where they are embraced by this other being and when they are lifted up into the when they are no longer their mortal form there is no specified gender right yeah, um, uh, yeah. Mike, Mike Gould says multiple partners, mm -hmm. and and um, listen, trauma and the crucible of battle and survival makes some strange bedfellows. I bring to you prison, uh, and the battlefield. Maybe there are like it doesn't necessarily mean, for example, that someone is like, oh, I must specify that my character is bisexual or something maybe they just have a specific relationship with other people due to the circumstances that they were in in a non forced manner if that makes sense i don't know um yeah, Zamora says, I know people are making a big deal about that, about the Loki show. Like Zamora says, remember, Loki did actually give birth several times, if I rem if I recall correctly. Sure did. And in mythology, um, Loki has always been gender fluid in, in the, I believe, actual Norse mythology, as well as, uh, uh, ha has Zeus ever, Zeus has always been a horny toad, but I think think Zeus might have even been female at one point or another, or maybe there were some other male gods like Mercury or, uh, or something that the Hermes might've been gender fluid as well. Uh, let's see. Oh, I missed a, missed a comment here. Uh, Mike says earth dawn from way back <laughs> as a way to deal with depopulation from an apocalypse had trolls, the PC race partaking in the concept of line marriages um, on, on, uh, on troll, a troll of either sex may be married to married. Uh, oh, oh, I missed a comment. A troll of either sex might be married to multiple partners. 
Yep, absolutely, absolutely. And that might be actually kind of cool to have a player character who's like, you know what? I'm a player who loves making <laughs> making multiple characters. So instead, I actually have like five player characters of different genders that are like in a, like a co- constellation, and each one, I I play different members of the family that go on the adventure that do a thing. Right? That might thing or maybe player characters make up a constellation group you know that would be that would be kind of cool for for a group of players to all make individuals who are essentially bonded or married to each other um mike says which which not only helped regaining a foothold on the world but also united multiple clans of trolls hmm i like that i like that a lot where you you have like the roles might be not gender specified i suppose Doppelgangers might trolls and doppelgangers and things in classic Dungeons and Dragons might breed that way, where doppelgangers choose to volunteer themselves to play a specific gender. To I, like, I don't know how doppelgangers breed. Like, I mean, they they might breed through um, cell division, right? Like that, <laughs> or trolls might just breed. Like, all right, time to chop my arm off, or or slice me directly in half to become two. Like, it might be that way as well. But if if we're talking gender roles, there it might be that like changelings and doppelgangers might choose temporarily to be a specific gender to give birth, and that might make them vulnerable from the outside. Like, if if humanity knows that we. You know, the doppelganger's like, I'm going to have to live as a female for at least nine and a half months or something, right? And the other doppelganger's like, okay, well, I'll be a guy to protect you during your quote-unquote convalescence. And I'm, I mean that monster-wise, not in reality, but pregnant women can kick can kick ass <laughs> throughout their pregnancy. Don't don't get it twisted. And, uh, yeah, definitely no negatives on Constitution on that part. Uh, Tesla Ranger says, what could be more appropriate for a trickster god than one who was gender fluid? Exactly. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. What if a trickster god tricks their, <laughs> tricks their followers like randomly a PC wakes up and they realize that they're a different gender and the trickster guy's like, ha ha, gotcha. Poke, <laughs> poke their nose. Ha ha. Or, or, or they became a different gender. And the only way to get back is to, is, is to fall further into the trickster gods. See, that sounds more rapey though, doesn't it? Although it would be kind of fun if, if trickster God worshipers, that's what they love to do. Like, you wake up as a different gender, maybe even a different race or person, and they're like, you're going to have to be this person for three months. And they go, all right, I'll take that challenge. And, and the, the worshipers are like, yeah, let's see how, let's see if I can figure out how to fit into this person's life that I wasn't before. That would that would be really cool, right? Like, it's not that they're being forced to do it. It's more like, it's more like, I'll meet that challenge. Yeah, I was a dude, but I'm going to be this guy's wife. And I'm going to see how I can be the best wife this person can be just for temporary, just for temporary till the wife comes back home and then have to have to explain to the old wife, like, okay, listen, uh, I made this for dinner most days and then I supported him this way, but he really hates it when I, when I do this, but just make sure you do this thing. And the wife is like, okay, I got it. All right. Thanks for letting me come back. <laughs> Zamora says Zeus as has boinked everything with a hole. I bet even, I bet even actual holes. Anyway, everything. (laughs) Humans are humans and they have needs regardless of where they are and regardless of the situation. And they will find ways to fill that need. Prison anyone? Yep. Yep. They sure will. They have physical needs. So, um, I, I, again, it, it does sound forced, but it's also, also situational. Like I could imagine, it, remember the remember the TV show Lost and the people that land on the, on the island of Lost. I could imagine there being a societal necessity to break apart your your old world desires from your new world desires. Uh, Michael says doppelgangers breed just like we do, though the monster manual says they are all male. I broke that rule and declared they can choose to be male or female for sexual purposes. I never. 
I didn't know that it actually said they were male. I never. I assumed doppelgangers never had a gender and never preferred a specific gender. They just they took on a role and that that was it. And if they needed to change that role, they changed it. Like like a like a succubus incubus kind of combination. Like a, a doppelganger becomes the becomes the role they need to. Uh, yeah, they murder they murder kill people to take over. You know, body snatcher thing. But I was thinking like. If they met someone that likes a certain hair color, they'll change their hair color. And if that person likes a particular inward, outward, physical, gender-specified thing with a person who also has a desire for other gender-specified desires, the doppelganger would just put it on like clothes and be done with it. Uh, that's how I always took it. But, I, you know whatever it's it's our world right we're world building today so why not mike says one player at my table had a long romance with a female doppelganger that's why changelings exist in thol and of course that for me that's how i think changelings would exist anyway i i started a game where a it started with a murder so the game started with the pcs needing to meet a young prince who was going to get married and he found out on the wedding day that his bride was a doppelganger and killed her out of fear, rage, closed-mindedness. But she had a child, and they looked to the child and realized, oh, shit. And the king, noble family, was like, told the PCs, you got to hide that child. We don't approve of murder. So we'll deal with the son, but you need to take the child and run. And this, the story was the PCs, the, the child was the MacGuffin. The PCs had to go on a on a uh, travel quest to get the child safe. And throughout the, the game, the child was learning to shape shift and whatnot. And they would look around and the child would be gone. And they realized the house cat was was the kid. And they got to go after the, the, the you know, the the cat that ran away and then it became like a rabbit and, and then turned into another person's child and the, you know, the goblinoids were like, that's our child. What are you doing with our child? And you're like, no, it's just a shape change kid, but we can't explain it to you. And yeah, it was a whole big thing. It was, it was fun. It was more, it was more comedy of errors than anything, but it, it was fun. Dead man says Corlon Lotharian was a trickster god among, among its other roles. And e- even, even the idea of like, like, um, uh, someone changing their gender through like seasonal things or uh, 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 like frogs that go through a, a transition. Like a player character may say, hey, guys, I got to get back home because it's my, you, you know, it's it, I'm, I'm going th- I'm going in heat. Like I'm going I'm, it's my breeding time for w- no matter what gender role it is. And I got to get back home. And that might be a good way to do some like like, hey, one part of our adventure is travel, and all we're doing is traveling. The other part might be a stay at home, maybe a city or urban adventure. And when they're in the urban adventure, they're a different gender while they're they're doing it. Yeah, Mike Gould mentions uh, Mystique. Mystique from the X-Men is a perfect example of a doppelganger. Oh, yeah, she takes on – now, she takes on a role of her, but Mystique isn't – or Myst- maybe Mystique was probably born female, but – doesn't mystique herself doesn't have a doesn't have a desire for a specific gender and doesn't have to live as a specific gender as well like i said before there's actually three components to gender fluidity um what gender you are attracted to what gender gender uh, specifics you're attracted to both physically on the outside and you know genitalia wise and then the same same goes for the individual. What do they appear? What do they present themselves to the outside world? Um, one specific gender or another or something in between? How do they dress and act um, within society's roles? And then, of course, their fit, you know, how does a person physically feel about themselves? Like, does, is, does my mind match the physicality of my body? Um, and you can mix, mix, mix and match different components there. And then, of course, internally, like no matter what my body is, what the, where does my mind go within those roles and what does it diverge or mix with what society is? Like there's, there's nothing wrong 
with a big burly dude that is a caretaker. Uh, let's go back to Lone Wolf and Cub, right? Uh, Lone Wolf, the, the, the classic story of the, the warrior guy that takes care of the small child, the guy's got to learn to be the proverbial stereotypical caretaker and actually has to learn to not be brutal and murder-like when the small child takes him at his you know, face value or something. Uh, Zamara says, I know I made doppelgangers changelings um, agendered. I, I do too. And they gain gain a sex via the blood of their victims and then learn to live as that gender the hard way. I, I see that. I, sorry about make, bringing up the, the rapey kind of parts, but I was just like trying to figure out how to allow players in the world to flow into gender fluidity in a, in a natural way that just, it just came across wrong. Anyway, Mike says, when you say Prince who had to get married, all I can think about is this swamp castle scene from Monty Python's Holy Grail. Oh, <laughs> Monty Python. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oh, I, I haven't seen it. I'm going to have to look that up. I'm going to get clips off of YouTube for that. Wayne, Wayne says, uh, Xanth, Bink's wife, Chameleon, had three phases. She shifted from ugly and highly intelligent, of and of extremely lovely and dumb. Av and Av? Oh, okay. Uh, is that Xanth from, from the... Um, oh, not Pern. Um... Xanth Pink's wife's chameleon. <laughs> uh, what would happen if ooh, maybe that might that could have something to do with the chameleon Eladrin? An Eladrin elf is fooled by a doppelganger, gives birth to a ca half chameleon, a, a doppelganger Eladrin becoming a weird blend of chameleon, elven. Hmm. Okay, so so uh Z's got a couple of comments here. Let, let's see. Okay. Um, going back to okay, so the first comment was was a uh, I, I I made doppelgangers changelings a gender, and they gain like, they gained the sex via the blood of their victims and learn to live life the hard way. And the second part is uh, they can only change once, so it's a one way street. Ooh, ooh, wow! They better choose well. You know, they, they might not have a choice in the matter, or they might go, you know what? I want to live that way. If I kill that victim and take them over, that might be good for me. So Mars says, oh, and then there is Misfits, which explored being able to change gender. Funny part is the character that could that started off male and accidentally got himself pregnant with his own child with his own child. What is that? Was that in the Misfits show? The do you mean the uh, give, give me a message. You mean the 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 misfits, the orange jumpsuits, the young kids, the 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 British version of misfits? Let let me know. Let me know. Let me know in in, in the chat. Wayne says changing outside does that mean changing psychology? You know what? That that's why I was a, I said it out loud because that's what I was thinking. But I was wondering. I, I mean. If you drink a potion that changes your gender, you wouldn't change physically, psychologically inside. Now, how you handle it, like, for example, uh, there was a funny, there there was a, a dumb superhero, uh, cop, uh, superheroes known dial H for hero. They were a bunch of kids and they had like a rotary phone dial looking thing and they would dial and they'd become a random superhero. And at one point, these two guys were like best friends and they found the little dial H dumb thing because they were these like these like little small stories. And at one point, the guy turns the dial and becomes this like really beautiful statuesque, stereotypical, uh, big booty, big breasted female superhero. And it, it, he's like, dude, you're like gorgeous and stuff. And they realized the guy who was his best friend was like, I actually kind of like being the lady. And I, dude, we could be together, right? Now, mind you, could they have really been together as two dudes? Sure. But I wonder if that opens the pathway to like, 
um, because that even happened in Black Mirror, where the two guys are online as their avatars, and one becomes female, and they're like, you know, we can be together now. Um, It's a little bit of a cheat in real life, but arcane-wise, I could see something like that happening. Like, you know, now that I'm in a female body, maybe I should just, maybe I naturally just fall into it. Uh, Tesla says in Runaways, when Zavin finds out Carolina is a is a lesbian, they nonchalantly informs her that that scroll can change their gender as easily as humans can change their hair and shape shifts into a woman. Oh, that was that in Runaways? Hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I, I was reading a thing that said, like, it's funny how the media has been embracing um, binary genderism, but they're not really embracing fluid genderism and like bisexuality, which is which is really strange. But yep, go ahead, quilt bags. Uh, Tesla Rangers is going by the alias Fanchon, Win, and D. Chameleon is a shifter who can trade her attractiveness for more intelligence and vice versa. At will, sorry, at will with Fanchon consequently being her ugliest but most intelligent version and D as her most beautiful but extremely daft manifestation. I, th- that's, e- even though that's a little problematic somewhat, there is, there's always been the idea that no person can be perfect. Like you, you have to give up something to get a thing and Shifting might be a thing, although that it, oh, you can go down a dark path, a, a dark kind of like stereotypical pathway with that because you get back into the hey, my character is going to be male, so I'm physically tougher and stronger, but stupid, and I'll be the sexy female now after like a, a short rest, but I, I'm physically weaker, but but socially and mentally better. Uh, you go to a little bit dark, uh, maybe, I, I don't know. You, you, I think you could play up, if you have a good group that's willing to go with the stereotypes, in a way, I think you could do that. I don't know if I would make that a rule, although maybe doppelgangers, that would be a rule. I don't know. I I find it, my first instinct says problematic, but I wouldn't eliminate it. Because I don't think you, I, I don't believe in like, oh, it's dumb, so or it's problematic. Get rid of it. I would just have to like, oh, uh, tweak it a little bit. Oh, tweak it a little bit. The ugly and intelligent and beautiful but dumb is uh, it, it, that's a trope. That is that's a classic trope. But I would deign to think like, like, um, what's the classic thing about business? It's uh, you get it cheap, fast, and quality. Pick two. I, w- I would probably do something like that. Like I'd go, okay, you can be attractive and smart, but you're going to have to be like maybe physically weak. Like you'll have to pick something that's your limitation and maybe mix and match those limitations. Like, yeah, you could be, you know, ugly, but then maybe you are extremely charismatic and, and tough or something like that. Oh, half and half. I didn't, re- oh, I, that's what I, I I didn't want to guess at that <laughs> Tesla because my brain's going too much, go, going a mile a minute. So, but thank you there. It should be half and half. Yep. Uh, I got to go back up too far. Um, mm, 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 mm. Z answers yes, sir. Okay. The, like an average of the two. Mike says that falls into the dumb blonde trope, which I avoid like the plague. Yeah. Mm, you might want to, oh, might might not want to do that i've gone on really long with this one i'll go a little bit further because i can actually get away with it this time uh day off and whatever anyway uh it's not my actual day off like i still got to work but uh, time time shifting the i think the it's this this is a very weird thing to say but we as role players are brilliance like I said, we are um, we are pattern recognition monsters. We are computers, and we love patterns. And then we tend to over pattern things. Like for example, the idea that uh, men are strong, women are weak is a pattern that we've created that doesn't actually play out in the truest sense because we love to f- f- force things into a pattern. There are far too many women that are super strong and athletic and just the toughest guys, just as there are plenty of men who take on quote unquote traditional female roles with, with 
without blinking an eye all the time. And that's because it's not a, it, it's not, there's no line that people fall on one side or the other. There's always this moving, there's a moving sliding scale of things and more people fall into the middle scale than actually fall out on the, on the uh, extreme edges. So, so one of the, yeah, pigeonhole Tesla's like pigeonholers and whatnot. Yeah. And I think disrupting that not only sounds fun, but actually disrupting the disruption also sounds fun as well, right? Like guys go to Amazonian tribe, they go, oh, my my assumption of gender has been disrupted because all the ladies are like these, these powerful female warriors that are like ass kicking and we respect them for being ass kicking. And then the, the big old burly, you know, the woman that's busy, basically beating ass goes to the dude is like, I'm looking for a dude like to, to settle down with. And he's like, I didn't think you guys wanted to do that. And she's like, why do you assume that just because I, I can beat ass that I don't want to have a relationship with someone. And he's like, Oh, I didn't want to assume that. And she's like, well, you're making an assumption about an assumption. right? It's, you can get to those, you get to those, uh, those like, uh, um, uh, <laughs> cycle of, of things. And it can be, it can be pretty fun to do that. Right. Like, you know, uh, like if the dumb blonde is really dumb and you're just like, Oh my God, are we playing with that trope? And then everyone else is like, yeah, we don't like the idea that the dumb blonde's dumb either, but she's part of our group. So whatever, <laughs> you know, Wayne says, uh, tropes can have basis in reality. And they do ugly and dumb spends more time alone. Also, um, also has, m- meant to be shortened to average also average meant to be shortened to average my bad communicate no no it's it, it what happens is if i read something i don't know the context and i kind of remove my own contextualization so when people put in things like um like like in my opinion or laugh out loud or something sometimes i miss the more extraneous ones because i'm my brain is just like reading letters as opposed to like Oh, now I know what they mean. You know that kind of stuff. Sometimes I get it. Sometimes I just I just fart. So Mike says humans love placing things into categories. Yeah, we and we don't like to we don't like to muffin top our categories. <laughs> you know, like meaning like things mo- more often than not things spill out of the category, and we like to stuff everything back down into the category, right? Like like uh, again going back to the dumb idea that well men are stronger than women, and I'm like no, there is a there is a percentage of that but for the most part most people fall into the into the mean <laughs> you know not not normally one edge or the other but we like to take edge cases and go there it's the astronaut issue right it's the edge case is the real thing so Zabar says i would need to watch this all over again i miss so much also dbj do you happen to have something on aging and elderly youtube is really bad for searching for info and crap for ideas uh aging and elderly hmm i don't but that's where we get our ideas from. Ooh. Now, if you guys remember in in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, there used to be in the original Dungeon Master's Guide when your player character was aged up and there were artifacts, magic, um, environmental effects. I think there were fey creatures. There were cursed objects. And there were mad, like actual spells, and so on. I think there were even potions. If you mix, if you drank two potions or mixed two potions together, you'd have a, a, a side effect where, in game, your character would age, and you would get certain stat changes. And in the game, your your physical stats, dex, strength, con, would decrease, and your mental stats, intelligence, wisdom, a little bit of charisma, would increase. And we used to we used to laugh at that because we, <laughs> as kids we were like, "There's a bunch of old people I don't like. I don't think their charisma is increasing." <laughs> but we we do think that as we get older, we do get more intelligent and get a lot more wisdom due to uh, life experiences. And as an old dude, I have to agree with that, or I have to agree with that and the fact that maybe. It's a, about not giving too many fucks, I think, <laughs> has a lot to do with that as well. So aging and elderly, that's a pretty interesting thing. Um, Mike says, my son's karate dojo was led by an all-female black belt group. I can tell you as a fellow martial artist, they would kick my ass without issue. Oh, oh yes. 
oh, oh, yes. <laughs> People fail to realize, like, you may, yeah, you think women aren't tough, and oh, my God, you you have no idea. You have no idea at all. I think it's, I think the reasoning we feel the stereotype is that way is due to access. So in throughout history, if ladies were more preferred to be the caretakers, giving childbirth and, and rearing the children and doing homesteading, I'm going to call it homesteading, where um, the, even with people that would travel, they would handle, you know, preparing where the, the camps would be made and things of that nature. The It's access to have the ability to, they weren't expendable. Men were expendable, essentially. Um, males were expendable. They'd go out in war and battle and hunt and get hurt and whatever. And we don't need them. We need the women to, to, to punch out more population. But that doesn't mean not having access means not having the ability to do the thing. Yeah. And like Tesla puts it like, yeah, that's why TV tropes. <laughs> that's what TV tropes is for. Yep. TV tropes. Yep. <laughs> Main elders. Uh, lots of lots of like elders fall at many oftentimes fall into the caretaker mentor. We need to protect kind of category. Although a lot of our action heroes now in the U S are starting to be elderly are Taking up the elder group, so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting to think about that. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for for being part of the show. Yeah, Z, you can get to the beginning, but you probably already know what we talked about anyway. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow is Third Pillar Thursday, Third Pillar of Exploration Thursday, and most anyone who's new to the channel uh, understands that I have always called myself the self-appointed third pillars of the tabletop RPG community. And that is basically, I love using the environment. I have books about the environment. It's taking me a long time to punch out these last two books or two and a half books. I hate it. Yeah, ride shiny and chrome. <laughs> so guys, coming to the end here, thank you very much. Please check out levelup5e.com. Level That's the, they're, 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 Finishing up the layout, you can look at all the playtest materials of essentially advanced fifth edition. I know it sounds strange. It's not Pathfinder. It's not iterative. You you have to see it. You just you have to see it. There's a new uh, inspiration called a um, a destiny system. It's 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 not. Oh my god! It's not alignment, and it's not. It's picking a destiny for your character and using the inspiration system to navigate your way by spending inspiration to do things that lead to the destiny of your character. And it it replaces or layers on top of the alignment system and the bonds flaws system and whatnot. So everything about it, everything about level up 5e is about layering on top of. Um, there's 170 martial maneuvers now that operate like wizard spells but they are martial maneuvers for characters that are martially inclined there are some there are more basic maneuvers that players can do all the everything from like tripping and pushing and disarming and stu excuse me stunning and easy grappling and all that kind of you, you just have to see it all the character classes uh exploration has been i was brought in as one of the contributing writers to the exploration pillar so i'm kind of proud of that part um even though i just did a little little part but uh but yeah 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 <laughs> i love that that part of the of the uh, uh of the game so I'm, I'm i'm proud of that so yes tomorrow is third pillar thursday i have some ideas it kind of sounds kind of strange like how are you going to incorporate the environment with gender? Does it make any sense? But we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing, Z. Like, like, uh, like tomorrow would be very interesting. I look forward to learning how to fit gender fluidity into exploring an environment. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah, we're going to have to – one day we're going to have to throw some funny dice together. I can't wait. I, I, I want so much time. I wish there was so much time. Uh, to play games and I often don't have to. I even considered, uh, I don't know how I would do it, but I even considered like running like live plays literally in this time slot. Like have, 
have general people just show up and play. That would be kind of weird. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mike's like, gender roles in the environment? Hunter-gatherer roles. Done. Yeah, if 5th if edition hadn't shot themselves in the foot about exploration, it would have, you know, whatever. All right, guys. Um, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you guys being here. Uh, of course, do the, the, the usual, like, the like, share, subscribe, whatever. Anyway. Um, anyway, have a great one. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, I'll see you later. <laughs> Everyone, be shiny and crazy.